I remember one time, I was 16 years old, so I was pretty immature in my faith. I was pretty immature, period. I was 16, right? But I remember we were playing a festival, and we were doing a meet and greet, and we had just played a bar the night before. And I remember we were played on a radio station, and the Christian radio station was there, and they came up to us, and they said, we need to talk to you guys. And they said, we have got to take your music off the radio. And I was so confused. I didn't, know, I didn't know why. So we said, why? And they said, you can't have one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. And they just left and walked off. Now, let me say, this is unintentional. I truly know that. And what they said is absolutely true. But I wish at that moment there would have been an atmosphere for a question or a conversation or something more than just, here it is, I'm walking off. Because I'll tell you what that did. It planted a seed. And what it did for me personally is I said, fine, I don't want anything to do with it. And I walked away from my relationship with the Lord. Again, I know that that was not the intention of that person or that comment. But I hope that you can see through that story that our words have power. And that everything we do, everything we say has the ability to influence something. The question is, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? So two things that I want to talk about today in regards to negative influence. The first one is this, if you're taking notes, I want to talk about how not to be a negative influence. And I'll tell you, when I was writing this and even praying about this message, I was like, man, do I, do I really need to go into points about how not to be a negative influence? It kind of seems maybe a little elementary, right? And then I it seems like it, you just don't be a doofus head, right? And, and then you're, you're a person of positive influence. But I totally understand that could mean different things to, to different people. And so using the goal that Paul gives us, I want to talk about how to not be a negative influence. And number one, the first thing that we can do is we've got to remind ourselves of who we are. We have to remind ourselves of who we were created to be. Again, remembering that we are called to be light in this world. We are called to, to use our influence for good. And I want you to remember the words that, that Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, for we are God's masterpiece. And let me just stop right there. If you came in feeling any other way, I want to encourage you today that you are God's masterpiece. You are beautiful to him. You matter to him. Don't you ever feel any other way. I want you to stamp that on your heart. You are God's masterpiece. And he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. What did he plan for us long ago? To use our influence to impact and populate the kingdom of heaven. And here's what I know, is that who you are determines what you do. Who you are directly determines what you do. And when we know who we are, when we are firmly planted in who we are, That'll affect what we do. When we know that we are God's chosen people, when we know that we are his masterpiece, we can walk confidently in the design that he has called and created us to walk in. When we know who we are, it'll affect what we do. And that's what we need to measure everything we do against. If we are made in the reflection of Jesus, in the, in the likeness of him, then we've got to ask ourselves, man, how, would, how would he respond to this person? How would he respond to this situation? We've got to remind ourselves of who we are. Number two, the second thing to not being a negative influence is speak positively about people and circumstances. Paul was very clear that gossip, rudeness, negativity, these are all things that, that Paul says are, are qualities or attributes of a, of a person with negative influence. And let me just say, too, if I can get real, y'all, we don't have time for that stuff. We got souls on the line. So I don't know why we would want to waste our time having gossip conversations, right? Because we can't wait to tell Sally what Susie did instead of praying for that person and hopefully opening a door that leads to that person having a heart transformation that leads them to Jesus. We don't have time for gossip, rudeness, or negativity. There's souls on the line. And watch what Paul says in Ephesians 4. He says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Come on. Plain and simple. 
but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, or let me take it one step further, your keyboards. Only what is beneficial for building someone up. James backs it up in this. James gets a little spicy here. He says, with our tongues, we bless God our Father, and with the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. He goes on and says, curses and blessings out of the same mouth, my friends, this cannot go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next. Apple trees don't bear strawberries. Raspberry bushes don't bear apples. You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water. We cannot be two-faced. We cannot go around and praise Jesus with this tongue and then curse the same people that he created with the same mission that we all have at the same time. We have to be people of character. We have to be people of integrity. Then we'll build enough trust to open that door for a further conversation that will hopefully lead to a heart transformation. Number three, of how not to be a negative influence, we have to have integrity with people. Just reinforcing what we talked about. And John Maxwell in his book, Becoming a Person of Influence, gave some great keys on how to become a person of integrity. One of them, the first one he says, is commit yourself to honesty, reliability, and confidentiality. That's the first key to becoming a person of integrity. The second is exemplify humility. Paul says, again, pride and boastfulness are not qualities of positive influence. As followers of Jesus, we are to let our servant nature lead us to let our light shine for others, to impact them, to break down walls, to have conversations that leads to the heart transformation. We cannot and will not have the ability to have those conversations if we are driven by ego and pride. We cannot and will not have the ability to have those conversations if we are always thinking that we are better than others. We have to exemplify humility. Proverbs says this, your boast becomes a prophecy of future failure. The higher you lift yourself up in pride, the harder you'll fall in disgrace. Do you think about that? Your pride is guaranteeing a failure in the future. And the more prideful you become, the harder that you are going to fall. We will never be able to use our positive influence if we are always prideful or we are ego-driven, or we are thinking that we are better than someone. I love the quote that Dale Carnegie said, and, and I hope you see the tie to influence here. But he says this, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. It can't be about us. We have to exemplify humility. The next one that John Maxwell says is he says you have to major in the minor things. When it comes to integrity, it's the little things that make us or break us. It's the small disciplines daily. It's the the, the consistency of doing the right things right time over time that will compound and bring about big health. Because here's the reality. When it comes to integrity, it doesn't matter if we cross the line by an inch or a mile. We still cross the line with our integrity and our values. We have to do the right things consistently. It will compound to big health. The next thing, the last thing about becoming, not becoming a person of negative influence is keep the main thing the main thing. We were put on this earth for a mission. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. That's our commission. That's the great commission. That's why we are here on this earth. It is not to wake up, go to work, come home exhausted, watch Netflix, eat, go to sleep, repeat. Now let me say, those are things that we do. So let me ask you, when you're in those, how are you using your influence? When you're in school, when you're in the workplace, when you're in the marketplace, when you're in the hallways, when when you're with your family, how are you using your influence? Because remember, everything that we do, everything that we say has the ability to influence. The choice is yours on how it's going to pan out, positive or negative. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring-a-ding that bell so you never miss a video or a live stream, and give this a share to one of your friends. And remember, we go live every single Sunday. Till next time, pray God's peace.